Welcome to video number 69. This is uh, a follow-up really to 67 and 68. I've got a new set of data to play with, but the concept is the same. What we're trying to do is reference our result against something. Instead of a smallest worthwhile change, this one we are referencing against uh, either a single benchmark or a more specific scale or position scale or individual scale. So let's get into it. We've got four examples to look at. The first one's the most simple. We have a single benchmark, a score of 130, which I've placed just above here in cell F4. So we need to identify whether or not this cell, the result for Lizzie Lopez, is greater than or equal to our benchmark. And if I lock that benchmark down with the F4 key, then I can simply double click, send it down, and the whole thing will fill itself in. Going up to conditional formatting, select new rule, format only cells that contain cell value equal to true. Put the format in as green, and we're good to go. Why don't we just add the second one as well? Format cells that contain false. We'll put a, a lightish red in there. And so that's pretty easy. Um, I've formatted column E. Normally I would obviously format the data itself. I'll show you what that might look like. Select the entire set of data. New rule. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. I need to remove the dollar sign in front of the 10. So that's one option. That whole column now is referencing against column E. Column E is ultimately redundant. So why don't I clear that? and go from the beginning. I select this entire group of cells again. I can say new rule, use a formula. Just move that to the side slightly. Take the dollar sign away from the 10 just like I mentioned earlier. You can see automatically uh, dollar signs have been applied. That happens inside the conditional formatting window. So it's, uh, um, it's assuming that's, that you always want to lock it to a single cell, which is quite clever. So if I click OK now, I've added a conditional formatting rule without needing column E. And we can see it's giving us the same result as, as putting that column in there. Another way to do it is to have a bit more of a scale. Firstly, just referencing it to see what difference there is between the result and the benchmark. And so we can see the scale goes from negative 28 up to 18. So I can add a conditional formatting rule in there. Um, the top of the list here, it's already selected for us. It says two color scale. Instead of lowest value, I want to choose a number negative 30 goes red makes sense to me to have an equal scale so I shouldn't have 20 here because then the threshold uh, point the change from uh, bad to good if you like is at negative 5 and that doesn't make as much sense to me as having it at 0 so uh, you can see now what the colors are going to do they're going to change from red orange through the middle and going into green. I personally am not a huge fan of this. I, I don't like some of those blended colors, but um, it can look okay depending on what your data structure is. So second example is something that's probably a little bit more realistic, and that is where you have um, bandings. So in this case, the banding is just three. We've got Good, okay, and, and bad, for want of a better classification. I've just called them green, orange, and red. An if equation, in my opinion, is the easiest way to do this because the formula is easy to write. 
if our result is greater than or equal to this score here, lock that down, then what do I want to choose? I could either click on green here or a code. I'm going to do a code simply um, because uh, that's kind of how I'm used to working. I also want to lock that down. Second if this cell is greater than or equal to that, lock it down again, then give us a 2, lock that down as well. Otherwise, the answer must be that. And now you might wonder why I didn't have to say for the second criteria, the orange criteria, that C10 was also less than 135. And the reason for that is that Excel just evaluates in the order that you write the formula. So if a number was in fact 138, it satisfies the first criteria and so the formula stops. It doesn't evaluate the whole formula and then pick the one that it wants. It realizes that C10 is in fact greater than or equal to H5 and therefore it puts the answer from cell J5 and then moves on. It doesn't calculate everything after it finds a hit. So if I click OK, if I hit Enter, I can send this down to all my cells and I can get a result and it looks like it's picking it up correctly. So we apply a conditional format to that. Let's use a three color scale for a bit of a variety. Our lowest number is 1, so we need to reverse things and make that green. Our middle number is 2, and that's orange. Our highest number is 3, and that's red. And so there you go, it works pretty well. You'll note that there's no blending of colors because we haven't got any decimals between one and two or two and three to, to get that blended color look. It's pretty harshly um, red, orange, or green there, but that's okay. So we're comparing to that generic scale there, something that's quite commonly done. If we want to get more sophisticated, we can have a position scale so that numbers are slightly different depending on your position group. And so to make this work, it's really about having a uh, reference table somewhere in your sheet. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll see that I usually have a control panel sheet. This is an example of something that would be on a control panel sheet. I'm a big fan of using named ranges for formulas to make things look easier and be easier to work with. So selecting this group of cells, I type in the name box something simple like position BM. Normally I'd prefix that with the word table, but this is just like a single problem that we're solving rather than a bigger system. So I'm happy to break the rules in this particular instance. So I'm going to delete that and start from scratch just to make it a little bit easier to follow. If this result, 125, is greater than or equal to and this is the tricky part, really. Let's use VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP's a dead easy referencing formula that you should be trying to learn as soon as possible if you don't already know it. What do we want to look up? We want to look up the position group of this athlete. Just for good practice, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the B. Where do we want to look it up? We've got a table called position BM, and as we type that in, it goes purple, and the box highlights in a purple shaded cell, so that makes it very easy to know that we're on track. We're trying to do the first criteria, which is green, so that is column two of our table. And we want an exact match, which is a zero. And so let's have an evaluation of this. Is C10 greater than or equal to the position benchmark for defenders? Hit F9 and it tells us false. 
if that was in fact the case, we put a one in there because one is our code for green. If that's false, let's type in our second criteria. If C10 is greater than or equal to exactly the same formula as we put before, except this time instead of column 2, orange is in column 3. What if this particular if is true? Then our answer is 2. That's an orange score. If not, our answer is 3. Close brackets until our formula tip disappears. And we can get a score of 3 here. Let's see if that's correct. For a defender, she scored 125. And that is a red, which is 3. Let's copy down and see if it's holding true across the entire scale here. Let's look down here. Jenny Wallace is a midfielder and she scored 137. Midfielders have 135 as their green threshold, so yes, in fact, that is true. So we've got that right as well. I could apply the same conditional formats as I did in column H. And there's a trick to doing that if you want to be able to copy your conditional formats. Copy. Paste special formats. And that works really well. So why don't I just check out what happens if I edit it. Everything updates exactly right. And so uh, we used an if equation there. If equations work really well when you don't have a lot of different scales. If you had a 10 point scale, an if equation would look pretty horrific by the end of it. It would work great, but it would look pretty bad. So a uh, index match function like the one I used in video 68 would be a better option if you had five or six different uh, levels of um, achievement in your scale. Now, in my opinion, the whole purpose of uh, assessment for athletes and performance monitoring is about comparing an individual against their own previous result or against their own benchmark, which you've generated with uh, knowledge of that athlete. And so to reference against their own benchmark, to me, makes the most sense. It is obviously the most complex, but it doesn't have to be uh, impossible. So I've just simply created a random set of data here. We've got a PB table, and what we're looking for is for athletes to be able to get 90% or more of their PB to be considered green. Between 80 and 90% of their PB is considered orange, and anything below that is considered red. And this table uh, simply leverages off a basic formula. I've got the PB in column U, and column V is simply multiplying it by 0.9 and 0.8. So if suddenly we get a new PB for Lizzie, which is 138, then those other results will update. So um, if you've got something like that, for example, with regard to jump testing, you want to make sure your athletes are within 90% of their PB to um, provide you with an indication that they're nearly okay to train, then this kind of table will work for you just fine. And so let's go through the process just like we did last time. Uh, the first step was to create a named range. So if I select all of these cells, Let's give it a name, player PBs, let's say, and we're good to go now. And so the same process that I used in column L, we're going to write a if equation, and we're going to look up the individual athlete's name in the reference table. To make this process a little bit easier to follow, I'm simply going to hide this other stuff so that we can see our original data while we're writing the formula. Equals if this score is greater than or equal to 
Let's use VLOOKUP again. What am I looking up? Athlete name is what I'm looking up. Where am I looking it up? A table called player PBs. Same as previously, as soon as I hit tab on that, both the name and the formula bar and the box itself color purple to tell me that I'm on track. The column is column three and it's an exact lookup. Is the score greater than or equal to 90% of the PB? Let's check that out. In the formula bar, select everything, type F9, and we find out that it's true. If that's the case, put one. I think you get where I'm going here. If this result is greater than or equal to VLOOKUP, player name, in our data table, column four, then what does that get us? That gets us a two. Otherwise we get a three, close the bracket off, another close bracket, hit enter and we're done. Drag that down, I can't double click unfortunately because double clicking requires there to be data immediately to the left or right so that the formula knows how far to go down. So um, I have to drag that down. Okay, what I'm gonna do is select all of this data. I'm gonna write a function here called ran between. Ran between is a wonderful way to put example data in to see if your tools are working. Bottom of 110, top of 140, that means it's gonna put random numbers anywhere between 110 and 140. Because I selected all the cells in advance before I started writing the formula, if I hit control before enter, it'll do all the formulas at the same time. And even better than that, it becomes dynamic so that if I hit F9, it reevaluates. So quickly unhiding this stuff. If I select, this time I'll just use the Format Painter. It has the same effect as what I did previously. And now F9 will make all of these colors just dance because they're re-evaluating all the time and giving us new randomness. And therefore, if I'm looking at charts or tables with conditional formats like this, it provides me with a really good indication of um, whether or not my formula is robust enough to survive lots of different sets of data. So this gives me confidence that by eyeballing it, that I've got it right. So four different ways to reference a result against a benchmark or a standard. Um, a single reference, a scale, a position scale, or an individual scale. Uh, hopefully that's useful to you. If you want a copy of this sheet, then please email me and I'll happily send it through. Uh, make sure you remember to reference number 69 in your email so I know what to send you. Uh, another shameless plug, if you're interested in learning a bit more of this advanced stuff, then check out the links below and go and check out my Vimeo channels. Cheers.